Science Management class. Uh, today we are going to discuss about little slow. This is fairly a uh, very simple concept. However, it has very uh, good managerial. It will give you very good managerial insights. So uh, I will explain the theory first, and then we will go through one example so that uh, you will be very. Uh, uh, you will get more knowledge how you are going to use this in practice. So uh, these are some terminology that I am going to use when I am going to discuss about the theory. Uh, the first one is steady state. Steady state means the variables that we are going to consider does not change over the time. And the second one is time averages. That means we are always taking the average over time. So, um, I will come to this when I am uh, discussing the law. Uh, just imagine this is a toy car manufacturing company. And you can see there is one, this car. Just imagine somehow you manage to sit in the car and then you are going to go through the whole process now. So, you can see there are five workstations. And imagine that for the simplicity, each workstation takes exactly two minutes. So each of these workstation may be doing some assembly operations. So this is a semi-finished toy car. This particular process will take this, go through these five assembly processes and the finished car will come out from this side. So um, the main question is what is the time average inventory? in this system. Here the system means inside the factory. So system you can say uh, is uh, this box, basically this box. So if you are now just imagine you are sitting uh, in the car, the green car. So now you are in the first workstation. So you have to go through two minute processing there. And then you move to the second workstation. So you are again going to um, get processed 2 minutes, so altogether you have spent 4 minutes. So likewise you will go through the third work process, so altogether 6 minutes have been elapsed. Then the fourth one, 8 minutes, fifth one, now 10 minutes have been elapsed and you will go out from the process. So while going through this whole process you spent 10 minutes. So we call this 10 minutes as total flow time. That means if you are going to go through the whole process step by step, the total time you are going to take to go from in to out is the total flow time. So in this case it is 10 minutes. Now just imagine, now you are not going, not going to sit in the car and go through the process. Now you are going to stand outside the factory and going to count how many cars going out from the process in each hour. So as you know, in every two minutes, this station will finish processing one car and send it out. Next two minutes, again another one. After another two minutes, you see another one. So within one hour, you will see 30 cars going out from the process. So that is your throughput rate. That means if you stand outside the process and then count the number of cars, toy cars, get manufactured during one hour, or maybe you can take two hours and take the average, so it will be your throughput rate. In this case, your throughput rate is 30 cars per hour, so we will just convert it to per minute, so it will be 0.5 cars per minute. So what the little law says is, your time average inventory is equal to the throughput rate into the flow time. So in this example it is very easy to see the inventory going to be at any given time 5 toys cars. Because each workstation will have exactly one car processing so altogether there will be 5. So in this scenario this inventory again going to be 5 cars so it is satisfied. So this concept is fairly simple but now we are going to see how we are going to use this in um, different setting. Okay, this is 
a very uh, simple uh, example. Um, you don't have to read it. <laughs> there is a car, car repair shop and there are two hoists. So we want to uh, figure out how long a customer wait before getting its car repaired. So that is the first question, question A. And we know the uh, rate, incoming rate of customers is four customers per hour. So that is your throughput rate. So we want to see how long the customer is going to wait. Okay, in this case it is very important to define your system. If you define the system incorrectly, your answer, whatever the figure you are looking for will be different. So in this case we are only concerned about the waiting time, not the time taken to uh, repair the car. But we want to know how long a customer wait until he gets into repair shop in the waiting area. So your system is, your system is here. So these dotted lines define your system. So you have inventory 8 cars, it is specified in the uh, problem and we know the throughput is 4 cars per hour, it is also given. So you can easily find the flow time which is T is I divided by R which is 2 hours. So on an average a person who comes to this repair shop waits 2 hours before getting his car repaired. So in the part B, the repair shop owner has decided to divide the process into two. So he has decided the routine repairs going to go through one hoist. He is going to dedicate one hoist for that. And the other hoist is dedicated for major repairs. So in this case, again if you go through the question, it says there are five cars waiting in the routine repair. And the rate is 3 cars per hour for the routine repair. So your flow time is going to be 1.67 hours. So after you divide these two processes, the routine repair customer's waiting time has gone down. So it's a good indication that you can decide whatever you are going to do will make sense. But if you see the major uh, repair hoist, the inventory is 3 cars and the throughput is 1 car per hour because total throughput is 4 cars, 3 cars going through routine repair, only 1 car goes through the major repair. So then again the flow time is 3 hours. Initially we had 2 hour uh, uh, flow time for any time. Now what has happened, the routine repair waiting time has gone down whereas the major repair waiting time has gone up. So it's up to you to decide whether you are going to keep the first system or the second system. There's pros and cons. So, but if you see the weighted average waiting time, it hasn't changed. So if you take the weighted average waiting time, it's still two hours. Only thing now, on an average, certain customer group experience higher waiting time than the centralized system. So if you decentralize these processes, certain group will uh, experience low waiting time whereas the other group experience very high waiting time. So this is the basic application of Lipus law. So any questions? Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.